respected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth.
into your presence this morning humbled because we know that we were never worthy to be called your children, that our sin has weighed us down and kept us apart from you. But praise your name, God, that you brought a Savior into our lives, that you sent your only Son to stand before Pilate to be accused, to be mocked, to be scorned, to be, to be beaten. Thank you, Lord, that he was willing to stay on that tree until sin and death could be defeated. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you have given to us through your Son, because by his blood we have been healed and reconciled to you. As we come to you this morning, may your spirit rest heavily upon us. Convict us of our sins so that we can repent and prostrate ourselves before you and worship you as the only wise God, our Savior. Be with us in all things that we do that your name may be glorified because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand as we sing How Deep the Father's Love for Us. The next scripture is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22. I'll be reading verses 47 to 71. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. But Jesus answered, No more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests 
the officers of the temple guard and the elders who had come for him. Am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts and you did not lay a hand on me, but this is your hour when darkness reigns. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, this man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, you also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, prophesy, who hit you? And they said many other insulting things to him. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and teachers of the law met together and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Christ, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, I tell, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I asked you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, are you the Son of God? He replied, you are right in saying I am. Then they said, why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his own lips. This is the reading of the Lord.
Let us pray. God, it is fitting that it is cloudy and rainy outside on this day. As we look back on that day of so many years ago when you went to the cross, when you willingly shed your blood so that we might have forgiveness for our sin. God, it is easy as we tell the story many, many times, it is easy for us to lose the significance of it. And Father, I thank you for our worship service this morning that we've had the opportunity to be called back to a a right perspective by your word. The great grace that you've shown to us on that day so many years ago. Father, I pray that as we continue in this service that you would continue to speak to us in a powerful way. In Jesus' name.
portion of scripture is from Mark chapter 15, verses 1 to 32. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin reached a decision. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the feast to release the prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then? With the one you call the king of the Jews, Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why, what crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace that is, the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews. Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him shaking their heads and saying, So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Christ, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who crucified with him also heaped insults on him. Our final scripture reading this morning will be from that same chapter, Mark 15, 33 to the end of the chapter, 33 through 47. If you are able to, I'd invite you to stand for this final reading. Mark 15, verses 33 through 47. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he is calling Elijah. 
One man ran and filled one man ra- ran, filled a sponge with vinegar, put it on a stick and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus heard his cry and saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the Son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. It was preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. This morning, we have read from the book of Isaiah concerning Jesus Christ. Isaiah wrote these things down nearly 700 years before they happened. He gives us a picture of the rejection, the suffering, the atonement, the humility, and the love of Jesus. 